Welcome to the Green River Region 2022 Habitat Overview. I am Kevin Spence, the Green River Terrestrial Habitat Biologist. This video provides a summary of precipitation and weather related information, emphasizing effects to big game and other wildlife, ongoing mule deer habitat assessments, and habitat enhancement efforts occurring in the region. The Green River region covers most of southwest Wyoming, including southern Lincoln, Uinta, most of Sweetwater, and western Carbon counties. The regional boundary on this map is the red line in the southwest corner. The Green River region contains all or portions of mule deer initiative herds, including the southern ends of the Wyoming range and sublet herds, and most of the bags mule deer herd. Each of these herd units are labeled and are shown shaded in green with blue outlines. Mule Deer Initiative or MDI herds were designated by the Wyoming Game and Fish Department over concerns with declining populations. Where there has been a need to increase the public's awareness of issues affecting mule deer, enlist public involvement, and promote conservation of the species and its habitat. The remaining non-MDI herds in the Green River region include the Uinta and South Rock Springs herds. Although the South Rock Springs herd is not part of the Mule Deer Initiative, it remains very popular with hunters and the department collects the same habitat related data as if it were also a designated MDI herd. The quality and quantity of wildlife forage is dependent on the timing and amount of annual precipitation for grass and forb production, as well as shrub annual leader growth. High volumes of mountain snowpack and spring moisture is essential for summer range forage productivity to meet the high energy demands for does and cows during lactation. Buck and bull antler and horn growth and attaining stored fat energy reserves for fall rut, migration, and winter survival. Adequate spring moisture is critically important in the lower elevation sagebrush step to promote herbaceous vegetation and associated insect populations for sage grouse chick survival. Moisture through the growing season in these sagebrush step habitats are vital for pronghorn forage through the summer months. Severe drought can have a toll on low elevation sagebrush areas such as the South Rock Springs mule deer herd, and cause as much mortality as some winters, when does quit nursing and fawns either die during the summer or enter winter unfit for survival. These photo comparisons provided by Wildlife Management Services of the Rockies, LLC, shows a visual contrast to the same low elevation Wyoming Big Sagebrush site near Farson during two different precipitation years. Normal to above average precipitation is necessary to produce herbaceous forage and cover for sage grouse and other sagebrush obligate non-game wildlife species. It also affects annual leader growth of sagebrush and associated salt desert shrubs for adequate qualities and quantities of browse for pronghorn and mule deer. Habitat biologists evaluate annual and seasonal precipitation models and data for key mule deer herds in the Green River region. This information is summarized annually and assists wildlife biologists with season setting and herd unit objective review decisions. This graph shows the precipitation trends during the past six year period for all combined seasonal ranges in the Wyoming range mule deer herd unit. The x-axis shows each year and the y-axis shows precipitation in inches. Blue bars are the annual precipitation and the black dashed line is the previous third year average annual precipitation for comparison. Annual precipitation between 2020 and 2023 were below the 30 year average. The orange bars represent the precipitation that occurred during the period from April to June. This precipitation is extremely important for early vegetative growth and vigor, setting the stage for annual forage production. The orange dotted line shows the 30-year average April through June precipitation. 
The 2022 April through June precipitation was 4.3 inches and below the 5.2 inch 30 year average. The gray bars are the spring, summer, and fall precipitation, or the higher elevation precipitation during the growing season between May and July. The green dashed line is a 30 year average. May through July precipitation was below the 30 year average and the lowest recorded since 2017. This next graph is the precipitation trends for all seasonal ranges in the Bags Mule Deer Herd Unit. Again, the blue bars are the amount of annual precipitation, which was lower in 2022 than the 30 year average amount shown by the black dotted line. 2019 was the only year during the past six years where annual precipitation, precipitation met or exceeded the long-term average. 2022 April through June precip was below the 30-year average, but higher than the volumes in 2020 and 2021. 2022 spring, summer, fall habitat, higher elevation precipitation between May and July was slightly lower than the 30-year average. Moving on to the South Rock Springs Mule Deer Herd Unit. This herd unit includes the popular hunting locations of Little Mountain, Pine Mountain, Aspen Mountain, and Kinney Rim. The 2022 annual precipitation in this herd unit exceeds the 30 year average. 2022 April through June precip was below the 30 year average of 3.7 inches, but higher than the previous two years. May through July precipitation in 2022 slightly exceeded the 30 year average, which should have improved forage conditions for high, higher elevation fawn rearing habitats in the herd unit compared to previous years. This graphic from the National Integrated Drought Information System shows the Wyoming drought outlook as of February 28, 2023. Most of the western portion of the Green River region is experiencing moderate to severe drought conditions and the central and eastern portion of the region is either an abnormally dry or non-drought situation. NRCS snow tail data as of March 3, 2023 shows the Green River region snowpack having snow water equivalent ranging from 127 to 148% of the median. Although the effects of the severe 2022-2023 winter have been extremely difficult for mule deer and other big game, the current snowpack at all elevations across the region is very encouraging for soil moisture recharge and forage productivity during the upcoming growing season. Adequate growing season precipitation will be key for realizing desirable vegetation growth. As of March 1st, severe winter conditions have persisted across the majority of the Green River region. Average monthly winter temperatures for the period between November 2022 and February 2023 across big game winter ranges in the region have exhibited consistently colder than average temperatures, with much monthly average temperatures ranging from 1 to 12 degrees below the long-term average. The cumulative effects of the consistent winter storms, above average snow accumulation, colder than average temperatures, and associated wind chill temperatures on winter ranges across the Green River region during this winter are expected to result in significant deer and pronghorn mortalities. We are also expecting some elk mortality as well, but to a much lesser degree than deer and pronghorn. 48% of the fawn mule deer fitted with GPS telemetry collars in the department's Wyoming Range Focal Herd Unit study have died as of March 3rd. 10% of the collared adult dolls in the same Wyoming Range study have succumbed to the winter, and 13% of collared adult does in a separate telemetry study for the Uinta herd have perished this winter so far. Rapid Habitat Assessments, or RHAs, were first implemented by the Department in 2015 
to generally characterize conditions of important habitat types on the landscape within mule deer initiative herd units. Summarized RHA data are used as a habitat component by wildlife biologists during herd population objective reviews at five-year intervals to evaluate whether or not deer numbers are in balance with sustaining habitat and at acceptable or higher quality condition. RHAs involve collecting data and evaluating numerous mule deer habitat components at different sites across all seasonal ranges each year. Currently, the department collects RHA data from rangeland, riparian, aspen, and special feature habitat types within the Green River region's MDI herds. In the Green River region during 2022, department biologists completed four aspen, six riparian, and four rangeland RHAs totaling 2,674 acres for the bags herd, six rangeland, four riparian, one special feature, and one aspen RHAs totaling 3,727 acres for the South Rock Springs herd, and six rangeland and one riparian RHAs totaling 2,783 acres for the Wyoming Range herd. Several habitat enhancement efforts were conducted during 2022. The Red Desert Springs project has been an ongoing effort since 2019 to maintain the integrity and function of springs, seeps, and pocket aspen stands, which are vitally important for many wildlife species present on this dry landscape. This project has been a collaborative effort involving BLM, Muley Fanatic Foundation, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, Bow Hunters of Wyoming, Water for Wildlife, and the Jonah Interagency Mitigation and Pinedale Anticline Project. Steel jack fencing was used to create an exclosure at one additional aspen stand location during 2022 to reduce ungulate impacts on young aspen suckers and allow them to grow while enhancing vigor and productivity of associated understory plants. The aspen site is located within the sublet mule deer migration corridor near Pacific Butte, where heavy use by both wildlife and livestock have degraded conditions and threatened the sustainability of this aspen stand. Department crews completed 3,488 acres of sagebrush mowing treatment and mule deer transitional and winter ranges in the southern portion of the Wyoming Range Mule Deer Herd Unit during 2022. Areas treated included West Salem Ridge, Boulder Ridge, Gooseberry Spring, Round Mountain, and North Slate Creek Ridge. Sagebrush stands identified for mowing were dominated by older shrubs that lacked vigor and productivity. They also tended to exhibit denser canopies that limited associated grass and poor productivity. A fine scale mosaic of mowed and unmowed sagebrush was used to create a blend of shrub dominated patches and open areas with increased grass and forb productivity and ultimately will promote sagebrush age class diversity across these segments of crucial winter range and transitional range, which will not fully be realized for the next 20 to 40 years when sagebrush plants have reestablished with enhanced figure and nutritional browse. More immediate benefits are expected with increased forb species diversity and productivity in mode areas for meeting the nutritional demands for mule deer during the early spring migration. Increases in forbs, the overall production of herbaceous plant community and associated insect populations in mode areas are expected to also enhance brood rearing habitat for sage grouse and contribute to chick survival. Aerial herbicide application was also applied simultaneously to the entire project area and adjacent locations to reduce cheatgrass establishment and maintain native herbaceous vegetation. Additional sagebrush mowing treatments are planned for the Southern Wyoming Range in 2023 and the Little Snake River Conservation District has plans for mowing, loss and aeration, and mastication treatments to enhance sagebrush and mixed mountain shrub habitats in the Bags area during 2023. Approximately 24,000 acres of sagebrush grassland and mixed mountain shrub habitats 
retreated to controlled cheatgrass on key mule deer crucial winter and transitional ranges and sage grouse core habitat near Sage Junction. These treatments were not only designated generally control cheatgrass to enhance native vegetation, but many sites were also targeting cheatgrass control to encourage favorable sagebrush mowing results for locations identified for treatment during the next few years. Many of these areas were follow-up treatment of areas that had been previously treated. 540 acres of sagebrush and mixed mountain shrub were treated on Forest Service lands at Mahogany Ridge near Fontenelle Creek. 7,495 acres of sagebrush juniper mixed mountain shrub habitats were treated in the Little Mountain ecosystem. 4,302 acres of crucial year-long elk and mule deer range were treated to control cheatgrass in the lower Savory Creek drainage in the Bags area. Moreover, Carbon County Weed and Pest and other partners recently received a large sum of mitigation funding from Rocky Mountain Power's Gateway South Transmission Project to address cheatgrass control at a landscape level for the west slope of the Sierra Madres beginning in 2023. Cheatgrass is an aggressive, invasive winter annual plant that often outcompetes native vegetation and can become monocultures, negatively impacting landscape and ecosystem function. Pre-emergent herbicide is applied with helicopter or fixed wing and the selectiveness of the herbicide has little to no effect on growth of native perennial vegetation. Unfortunately, there are no one and done treatments, rather they are a control measure. Department biologists and partners monitor vegetation annually to determine when follow-up treatment is needed. Monitoring of cheatgrass control in the Raymond Mountain area that had been treated in 2018 and again in 2020 revealed the composition of cheatgrass in the plant community decreased from 53% in 2018 to 7% in 2020 to 0% in 2022. The ability to maintain healthy aspen habitat on the landscape is extremely important for mule deer and numerous other wildlife. Aspen communities are divided into two successional pathways. One being seral, meaning that they are relatively short-lived and eventually overtopped by competing conifers, and stable, where aspen are not competing with conifers, and long-term growth is pure aspen or nearly pure stands of aspen. Seral aspen sites require periodic disturbance such as fire to regenerate stands, which occurs via suckers sprouting from a network of shallow lateral roots between mature trees spreading throughout the stand. Without disturbance, conifers will gradually encroach aspen until aspen eventually disappears and the site is converted to pure conifer. In the upper Rock Creek drainage in the southern Wyoming range, Game and Fish and BLM hired a contractor during 2022 to hand cut 120, 192 acres of encroaching subalpine fir, then lop and scatter a pile slashed to dry as a field bed prep for a later prescribed burn treatment to regenerate young aspen trees. More of this type of treatment is being planned in upcoming years for both the Wyoming Range and the Bags mule deer herds. The department converted 9.3 miles of net wire and 5 to 6 strand fence to four wire wildlife friendly specifications at the Grizzly Wildlife Habitat Management Area near Bags during 2022. An additional eight miles of fence has been identified for wildlife friendly fence conversion on the Grizzly WHMA during the next year. 14 two point miles of fence were replaced with wildlife friendly specification fences in the Southern Wyoming range during 2022. An additional 13 miles of fences are planned for conversion in 2023. The cumulative effects of these fence and other similar fence conversions are extremely important for facilitating passage for migrating mule deer, pronghorn, and other big game between seasonal ranges. Thank you for your interest in wildlife habitat and taking time to watch this video. If you have questions about what was presented, please contact Britt or me.